Hey guys, here's your video on 9.6 counting principles. After you're done watching the video, you should be able to calculate permutations and use the fundamental counting principle. So calculating permutations is very similar to calculating combinations, which we did with the binomial theorem. Um, but before we do that, let's look at the definition of a permutation. It's the number of unique arrangements where order matters. And that's very important because later on we'll also look at combinations again, and that's where order does not matter. So permutations, order matters. Now here's your formula for the permutation, and there's two different ways to um, denote the permutation. So for letter A, um, we're finding the permutation of 7 and 4, so N is 7, and R is 4. So that is 7 factorial, over 7 minus 4 factorial. So that's 7 factorial over 3 factorial. And this I can go ahead and expand a little bit. So that's 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 factorial. And I'm going to stop right there because that because then I can cancel out my 3 factorials. So that leaves me with 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. Oops. Plugging it into my calculator right now. Is 840. Now you can do this in the calculator, just like you can do combinations in the calculator. You're going to hit math, move over to PRB. But instead of the NCR, you're now going to do NPR. And move over to change your ANS to a 7, and then 4, and you still get 840. So what I had in my calculator was this. And then that gave me 840. So anytime you're, anytime you're working with combinations or permutations with regular numbers, you can just plug that right into the calculator. Um, for letter B, I do not give you a number for N. Instead, I just give you the variable for N. So we're kind of forced to use the formula. So I have N factorial over N minus 3 factorial. Okay. Now what I can do is I can expand out that N factorial on the top. So N factorial is N times... N minus 1 times N minus 2 times N minus 3. And I'm going to stop right here because my denominator has N minus 3 factorial. And now these two will cancel. So that leaves us with N times N minus 1 times N minus 2. You do not have to multiply that out. You can just stop right there. And there is your answer for letter B. All right, next up, fundamental counting principle. So I abbreviate that FCP. That's the total number of ways an event can occur, which you get by multiplying the number of choices. So for example, the pin for your debit card contains four digits. How many ways can you make a pin if repetitions are allowed? So repetitions means that you can use the same number more than once. So it's four digits. So I have four spots. So for my first number, I have 10 digits to choose from. Second number, I still have 10 digits to choose from because I can use the same number multiple times. So I have 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. And the fundamental counting principle says that you can multiply all of those together. So there are 10,000. Just kidding, that's not 10,000. Is it 10,000? It is 10,000. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so there's 10,000 ways that you can make a pin um, if repetitions are allowed. Okay, what if repetitions are not allowed? So I still have four numbers that I need, I need to make. My first number has 10 choices. And since I can't actually repeat a number, that means for my second number for my debit card only has nine choices. And since I can't repeat, I now only have eight numbers to choose from, followed by seven. Fundamental counting principle says I can multiply all those together. So I have 10 times 9 times 8 times 7, which is 5,040. 
So once we take out the repetitions, you can see that the number of ways that you can make a pin for your debit card decreases significantly. All right, how many ways can a president, vice president, treasurer, and secretary be chosen from seven candidates? So I have my president, vice president, treasurer, and secretary. So I have four spots that I need to fill. Um, I have seven candidates, so that means I have seven choices for president. But once somebody is president, they can't really be anything else, so that means I have six choices for vice president, five choices for treasurer, and then four choices for secretary. And fundamental counting principle says that I can multiply all those together, so I have seven times six times five times four, which is 840. Now, letter B is actually a permutation because, uh, because order matters when you're choosing president, vice president, treasurer, and secretary. So what I could have done is I could have done the 7 and PR, and there's four spots to fill. And if I take that and put it in my calculator, still gives you 840. So just another way to approach it, since order does matter when you're selecting president, vice president, treasurer, and secretary. Okay, so combinations is when order does not matter. So for permutations, order matters. Combinations, order does not matter. Now I did do combinations with the binomial theorem, but that was just computing the actual number. Now we are going to do combinations in a context. So you are forming a 10-person committee from 9 women and 12 men. The committee must consist of five men, five women and five men. How many different 10-member committees are possible? So when I'm selecting these five women and the five men, the order really does not matter um, when I'm picking these people. So that's why it's a combination and not a permutation. So from the number of women, I'm selecting five. So that's uh, nine choose five, and that's for the women. And then for the men, I have 12 to choose from, and I'm selecting 5. So that's 12 choose 5. And that's for the men. And then the fundamental counting principle says that I can take these two numbers and multiply them together. And that'll give us the number of ways that that committee is possible. So I can take that and plug it into my calculator. Again, I'm going to start by typing in the 9, hit math, move over to PRB, it's option number three for the NCR. I'm going to take that times um, 12 choose 5 and then hit enter. And that gives you 99,792 possible committees. Okay. The next thing we are looking at is something called a distinguishable permutation. But before we can find the distinguishable permutation, we need to understand what a non-distinguishable permutation is. So those are situations where order matters, since it's a permutation, but repetition within the set forms groups that are alike. So for example, I have five chips with the colors B, R, B, W, B. So we'll say B is blue. No, just kidding. It says it's black. <laughs> um, so B stands for black, R stands for red, and W stands for white. So if I'm looking at the three black, one red, and one, one white, there are several different groups of this, the B, 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 R, W, which are non-distinguishable because those three black chips even if I were to rearrange them, will still give me a black, 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 red W. So you can't really distinguish between them. So what we can do is we can find the number of distinguishable permutations to get some of those uh, repetitions out. So all of the possible unique combinations from a given set is this. So N is your total. So in this case, it would be the total number of chips. And these down here are the factorials of the individual pieces. So let's go ahead and actually do a problem. So we're still going to look at the five chips. 
So how many distinguishable permutations can be formed from five chips with the colors three black, one red, and one W? So my total amount of chips is five, so that would be five factorial divided by the individual factorials of the, dif of the distinguishable parts. So that would be three black, so that's three factorial, one red, so one factorial, and one white, one factorial. So I can take that and plug it into my calculator. So alpha y equals to get the fraction bar. So that's 5 factorial over 3 factorial times 1 factorial and 1 factorial. And that gives me 20. So there are 20 distinguishable permutations um, for those 5 chips. Find the number of distinguishable permutations of the letters in the word Mississippi. Okay, so I needed to figure out how many letters are in Mississippi first. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So my numerator is 11 factorial. Now I'm going to start to look at the individual letters. So I have 1M. I'm going to count up my I's. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4 I's. I'm going to count up my S's, which is four S's, and count up the P's, so that's two P's. Now, if you look at these numbers down here, one plus four plus four plus two should give you this top number, which is 11, which it does. Now, I just need to use my calculator to compute this. So I'm going to do 11 factorial. By the way, your calculator has a factorial option. Hit math, PRB. It's option number four. So I have 11 factorial over 1 factorial times 4 factorial times another 4 factorial and times 2 factorial, which gives me 34,650 distinguishable permutations of the word Mississippi. All right, that's it for your notes for section 9.6.